Welcome to program number two in the series that we're doing with David Pawson. David, I wondered about how to introduce you. I was going to say, well, you're a prolific writer. You've written 20, 30 books, I think it is. Uh, you're certainly renowned as a, as a Bible teacher. You've been a pastor for, for many years. But when I said to you, what should we put under your name? You said to me, put underlined. What did you mean? Well, some time ago, I asked the Lord, what is my ministry? I need to know, what am I doing now? And the Lord said to me, you are an underliner. I said, well, what's that? It's not in the New Testament. And he said, you won't say much to people that is new to them, but you will underline what I'm already saying to them. And that will help them to do something about it. And I found that's exactly what's been happening as I travel the world. I don't say much that's new, but I underline what they're already hearing from God, but didn't do anything about. And they come and say, that's decided me. I'm going to do something about this. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to be one of the Lord's underliners. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're putting up the word teacher because that's what we decided yeah. on. But if we'd have put underlined, then that would have done. And you're here today to, to underline some of the things that Scripture yes. um, is talking about. And we're going to deal with one particular subject that has um, caused theologians and uh, the, the church over the centuries, really, to have a discussion on. But let me start by saying to you, when for you did faith become a reality? Well, as I've already told you, I was brought up in a, a Christian home and had a long line of Methodist ancestry back to John Wesley. Uh, John Pawson was one of his first helpers. My grandfather, David Ledger Pawson, was a Methodist minister. My father was a professor of agriculture, but in his spare time he was an evangelist. And he wrote in a book the name and address of all those he'd led to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I have that book at home, and there are 12,000 names in it. Uh -huh. And he did this in his spare time, mm -hmm. mainly by building friendships. He was a real friend of sinners, and the results are in that book. Mm -hmm. But that didn't do it for me. I was 17 before my parents' faith became my own, and that was largely through my cousin, who married an evangelist called Tom Reese, who just after World War II was the evangelist in Britain. He filled the Royal Albert Hall once a month, and he called it his little mission hall in Kensington. And it was going to a place called Hildenborough Hall, mm. which is where he held his conferences, uh, where my faith, my parents' faith became mine. Not actually directly through Tom Rees, but through two friends of his who were there Battle of Britain pilots, two fine young men who had had a record of downing enemy planes during the Battle of Britain. And so they were great, great heroes to me. And yet they were both outstanding Christians as well. And I think that more than anything brought it home to me that we need a faith of our own. So that's how I came to faith. Now, therefore, it was in the context, not of my Methodist upbringing, but in the context of evangelicals that I came to faith. And without really thinking about it, I accepted what most of them believed, this once saved, always saved idea, that as soon as you'd decided for Christ, as soon as you came to be a real Christian, you were safe for eternity and nothing more was going to be needed to make sure you got to heaven. And very often, evangelicals ask this sort of question, if you die tonight, will you be in heaven or hell? And the, the emphasis was on a one-time decision, and that settled it forever. Um, I have come seriously to question that. Well, you've written a, a book which is called Once Saved, Always Saved, and you've put a question mark after it. Yes. I think one of your uh, good friends, R.T. Kendall, has written a book by the same title. He doesn't have a question mark after and it. It's published by the same publisher. Is that right? That <laughs> and must I tell some people confusion. to read both and go back to the Bible. 
right. with an open mind and let the Bible speak. So, so David, if I said to you, let, let's start by saying, could you explain to us, that, without giving your own opinion, just the two different views and, and what they're basically saying? Well, very simply, one is saying you can't lose your salvation and the other is saying you can. It's as simple as that. All right. Well, then, my next question is, where do you stand on this issue? Well, as I say, I accepted in my early Christian life the idea that once you saved, you saved forever, and that's it. But my study of the Bible led me to a very different point of view. And, you know, I have noticed this, that people who believe in once saved, always saved, believe it because they've listened to someone who taught it. I've met many people who have only got their Bible, uh, particularly people in prison, for example. And with only the Bible, they all come out on the other side. They've read in their Bible warnings that you can lose your faith. In fact, I've discovered there are 80 passages in the New Testament that warn us not to lose what we've found in Christ. And uh, when you look up those 80 passages, it's pretty impressive. Every writer of the New Testament has a warning somewhere or a statement that we need to continue in faith and not just start in faith. So um, it was really my study of the Bible that made me do a somersault on that one. But, but there are lots of verses which which give both sides, isn't there? I mean, if I look at just one like John 10, 27, 28, my sheep hear my voice, says the Lord Jesus, and I know them and they shall follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. He doesn't include yourself in the anyone. He's saying no one else will do it. But he's saying in the same John's Gospel, abide in me, stay in me, reside in me. If you don't, you become fruitless, you wither, you die, and you're cut out and thrown into the fire. Same Gospel. Um, and it, to me, it's an amazing balance. That was one of the things that convinced me. The Bible says God is able to keep me. And in the same context, it says, Keep yourselves in the love of God. And almost everywhere you find this balance that Paul says, um, I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed to him. In almost the next verse, he's saying, I have kept the faith. And this keeping is a combination of my going on trusting the God who is able to keep. It never says God is certain to keep you. It says he's able to. If you go on trusting him, he will keep you. But uh, it's always, there's always an if in there. And Paul has some very clear statements in Romans 11, which preachers rarely quote. It says, if you do not continue in his kindness, you too will be cut off. So if we put it simply, David, what mm -hmm. you're saying is that it's possible for you to walk this Christian journey and then it's possible for you to turn and say, I'm not going to walk it anymore and lose your salvation. Yes. And indeed, John Bunyan knew this. If you read Pilgrim's Progress, he and Faithful are coming up to the Jordan River at the end of their pilgrimage and see the heavenly city beyond the river. And his companion is afraid of crossing the river and turns aside down another path to try and find another way. And John Bunyan writes, And so I perceived in my dream that there is a road to hell even from the gates of heaven. So what do you say to those Christians who say to you, Well, God isn't a liar. If God says my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, He's not going to at some point in the future get a rubber and, and rub my name out and Yes, and, and he is, it. and the Bible says that. So in Revelation, in one of the letters to the churches, he who overcomes, I will not rub out of the book of life. And the book of life is mentioned four times in the Bible, and three of those times 
can send names rubbed out. 